Welcome, y'all. How you doing today? Woo! Man, I'm, I'm fired up today. I'm excited to share with you today. Let me give you just a couple little updates of what's going on. Last week, we sent off three mission teams. We currently have missionaries all over the globe, but we have three teams currently serving right now, two in Honduras and one in Peru. So keep them in mind and pray for them. We've got about uh, 25 people up uh, with, the, I invited uh, some folks to go with me on a solitude retreat this weekend. It's the first time we've ever done this. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, there is a habit that Jesus uh, followed many, many, many times, very often in his life. And unfortunately, our busy society has sort of choked it out of our uh, lifestyle. And that is the habit of solitude. You read where Jesus frequently retreated to a quiet, solitary place to have intimate time with God, to hear His voice, to uh, pray, to rest, to be renewed. And uh, we, we, are, we get a little, uh, I don't know, we're a little, we're too busy, we're too psychotic. We don't sit and rest in God's presence very much, and it's, it's very tough. So I invited a, a group with me. You can see a picture of them. In fact, they're probably just now finishing up their final worship gathering, uh, been there for about 48 hours, and the assignment was to spend many, many hours in silence and sol solitude just listening for God's voice and, and, and praying to Him. And it was so cool. I, I left early to come back to be here, uh, but it has been so cool. God speaking to people. When, when God speaks to you, it changes everything, you know? So I encourage you to consider this as something. I mean, imagine uh, going away for the weekend with like one of your best friends or someone you're so in love with. How cool that is. Now imagine going away for the weekend with a person who loves you more than anyone in the world. That's what this was about. And just spending time with God. Nothing else. It has been so cool. So I hope you get to interact with one of them. Maybe we'll do it again sometime and you can participate. On the way back, Joel and Cheryl came back to be at church today. They came back a little early and, and Cheryl asked Joel, what, what did you think? And he put his hand over his ears and he said, uh, uh, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And I mean, good stuff, right? Woo, good, good stuff. I'm excited. Today, I, uh, sometimes when you come to church, we address sin issues. And it's about, hey, let's, let's ask God to reveal sin in your life. Not a bad thing. That can be uncomfortable at times. But today, I'm excited to really, really speak a word of encouragement to boost your faith and maybe totally rearrange what the devil has maybe done to you in terms of your view of God and your view of yourself. I'm fired up about this. We've been in the book of Ephesians this summer, and we're going to dive back in there. So I invite you to turn to the book of Ephesians. If you want to use one of our Bibles, maybe you didn't bring one, grab a red Bible under a seat near you, and you can turn to page 815. You'll be right there with us. But Ephesians, Paul's letter to the uh, many churches in the area of Ephesus and words to us. We've been, we've been studying this, and I'm fired up about today's passage I want to share with you. Before we get into it, though, I just encourage you to say hello to someone near you. You don't have to get up or anything, but look around. If you don't know anybody, I gotta, before you do this, i got to give a little shout-out. We've got some special guests today. From Centra Kids doing camp this past week. They're just doing camps, and they decided to be with us for church today. So please welcome Centra Kids. How many of you with Centra Kids? Let us hear from you. I know you can be so much louder than that. You're working with kids this week. So one more chance. Centra Kids, folks, how you doing? Ah, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Now let's give them a heritage welcome, everybody. Say hello to Centric Kids leaders today. Y'all, that, that was about a seven or eight out of a hundred. That stunk, but anyway. Welcome, y'all. Glad you're with us today. Say hello to someone near you. If you see someone you don't know, introduce yourself. If you know everyone's sitting close to you, I would say, hey, you're not inviting people to church enough, so... Just welcome people near you, and before we get started, just say welcome, glad you're here. Let's get to it. Is everyone, 
Is everyone at Ephesians? If so, just holler at me. Say, yeah. yeah. All right, Ephesians. We have covered chapter 1. In chapter 1, it was powerful to see who we are in Christ. God says, I've established Jesus on the throne, ruler over everything, and all power that's ever been is in Him. And because of this, in Him, you have access to reconciliation, redemption, every spiritual blessing in heaven. Even the same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in you. I mean, just good, good stuff that should fire us up. Uh, chapter 2, he gets into saying that, you know, previously, before we were in Christ, we were just, we were slaves to the desires of our flesh and and our lusts and our pride. We were slaves and we were set free, not because of any good works, not anything that we've done, not because we earned it, not because we conquered sin ourselves, but because of Christ, we have been set free and now we have access to Him. But I am afraid that the, the thing that the devil is good at in our lives is two things, is shrinking God... And, and, and causing us an identity crisis that leads to a lot of insecurity, condemnation, and shame. All right, And so as time goes on through the troubles of the world and things like that, I think the devil is just constantly trying to shrink God in our eyes and making our problems get bigger than God. And then we, we look at our past and how we mess up and we just become droopity dogs. Just, oh, woe is me. I'm a sinner. I'm a failure. And today I hope to flip that because I want you to leave here with a smile on your face, hope and faith in your heart, and just the word wow coming out of your mouth as you see how awesome God is and what that means for us, the hope that we have in that. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that you come across on the street a young child who is just lost in the gutter, has been abandoned, dirty, just in the slums, and your heart of compassion goes out to this child. You say, I'm going to take this child in. I'm going to adopt this child. And you do that, and you bring this child, you bring, a, you bring this child into your family, you feed this child, clothe this child, raise this child, teach this child how to live. You, you give this child your name. Now, how would you feel if after a lifetime of doing this, raising this child up to adulthood, someone goes up to this child and says, hey, who are you? And they say, oh, I'm just a slum baby. I'm nothing. I'm dirty. That would be offensive. That would be offensive. You'd say, hold up. No, no, no. That's who you were. But I have adopted you into my family. So when people tell you who you are, you give them my name. Because everything that's mine is yours. And we are one now. That's who you used to be. And yet when we go around just saying, I'm a sinner, I'm a loser, I can't do it. We are doing that to God. We are disgracing the work of Christ on the cross. Does that make sense to you here? We should go around recognizing that we are a king's kid and we have full access to the throne. We have full access to the power and life of God. And every day this should just blow us away. It should just fill us up. Hey, that's what, we can clap for that. We can, that's good stuff. That, that's, we can just get fired up, excited about this. Let me, let me give you another example. I think it's in Luke chapter 17. Uh, the disciples of Jesus said, Jesus, how, we want more faith. Will you increase our faith? Great question. I'd probably ask Jesus the same thing. And he tells this weird story that he often did. He, he didn't just give you the answer. He told some great stories to to help you dig deeper. And when they said, Jesus, increase our faith, Jesus told this story of about a slave coming in from the field and saying and realizing that that slave has no rights to, to food or drink or the table. So the slave comes in and doesn't uh, ex expect to get anything. The slave just says, I'm here to serve. Uh, have no rights here. Just what do you want? 
And this passage is misinterpreted a lot. I think what, really think what Jesus is saying is, you're still living like that slave. You're saying how to have more when you're just, you're still living like that slum dog. You're not a slum dog anymore. You're not the slave anymore. You are my child. I have adopted you into my family. And you have full access to the table. Come on up. Get you something to eat. Get you something to drink. Are you hungry? I'm here to feed you. Are you hurt? I'm here to heal you. Are you feeling hopeless? I'm here to bless you. Are you feeling unloved? I'm here to love you with a love you have never encountered before. So we have had this major identity crisis as the devil continues to pound us with lies, remind us of the past, uh, and accuse us of things that we have and haven't done. And God says, in Christ, you have a brand new identity. As you read the rest of chapter 2 and on into chapter 3, you see that the lines have been erased. Back then, it was a big difference between Jew and Gentile. We're the Gentiles. For hundreds of years, God's chosen people, the Jews, were the vessel through which God spoke and moved. He gave us the... Uh, Ten Commandments through the Jews. He gave us all the works of the Old Testament through Jewish writers and people. He gave us Jesus through the Jews. He gave us many writers of the New Testament through the Jews. And so they had this real sense of entitlement. Hey, we are God's chosen people, and they were. But when Christ came along, all of that was fulfilled in him. And Paul says, no more lines. Can you imagine sitting on death row for a crime you committed and someone showing up saying, you know what, paid for, no more guilt. You are free to go. And that's what Christ has done for us. It's it's amazing stuff. Look at this in chapter 2. Let's just read a little bit of this so so you can see. Therefore, look at uh, verse 11 in chapter 2. Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision. In other words, this was us. We would have been the Gentiles, and we were called the uncircumcised by God's chosen people, the Jews, that, that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, but now... In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross." by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both, we all have access to the Father by one spirit. Now listen to this. Consequently, this is verse 19. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So he says, oh, we have now full access to all the glory and power and love of God. And Paul goes on in chapter 3 to say, now it is my honor to be the one that God has chosen to begin this process of spreading this great news to the Gentile people, to us. And we should just have our minds blown that everything has worked out so that we can have full access and relationship with Christ. Now, the thing I love about this and what I want you to get, I really just want to focus on how Paul ends chapter 3 with a prayer that I want you to hear and how I hope to paint a a vivid picture for you today. Look at what he says in chapter, to end chapter 3. Let's see, where are we? Uh, Right there at 17, verse 17 of chapter 3. He says, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints, to grasp. This is what I want for you today. I want you to grasp, uh, just a little bit more, grasp how 
uh, wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's what I hope you can grasp today just a little bit more of how enormous God's glory and power and love is. I believe if you grasp this, any problem, any situation, any fear, any doubt will just shrink to minuscule size as you just reflect and are in awe by the glory of God. I want you to get back in touch with just this childlike wonder of who God is. I think that's why Jesus said, you, to have a relationship with me, you got to be like a child. you got to just be in awe. Let me tell you a little story. Just this past week, my family and I had a chance to get away a little bit to Panama City Beach. Such a wonderful time. This was Bailey. We have, a, we have four boys and a little girl. A little girl is, is three, and this was her first beach trip. So we got there late Monday night. It was after dark on Monday night, but we just couldn't wait. We had to take her to experience the beach for the very first time. I mean, can you remember your first beach experience? I mean, everything was, wow! I mean, look at all this water. Wow! Look at all these shells. I mean, we called them princess shells. Look at all these princess shells. Wow, and sand everywhere. I mean, she was blown away. But you know why we were late getting there Monday night? It's because we stopped at a rest stop. And I took my four boys in. Michelle took little girl Bailey in to use the potty. Now, me and the four boys, we took care of business. We got cleaned up. We walked back. We're sitting in the van. We're ready to go to the beach. And I mean, time is ticking, and time starts moving on and on and on. And I'm like, I'm getting worried. I'm like, what in the world is going on? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I'm like, all right, boys, stay here. I got to find out what's going on. And then I realize I see them in the distance. Bailey is fascinated with everything she sees. She sees this wheelchair ramp that goes up to the rest stop, and she's just, wow. I mean, up and down. And then there's a bird perched on the railing. She's like, oh, a bird. Wow. It's a birdie. And then Michelle said she walked into the restroom, and they've got a little hand dryer down to kid size. And she says, wow. I mean, she's mind blown. And then they walk by a drink machine, and she's just looking at all the drinks. Wow, look at the drinks. And I mean, it is everything. I'm thinking we could have just planned a vacation to the rest stop. <laughs> she is through the eyes of a child just blown away with wonder. Everything she sees is just, wow. That, when have we lost this? Can we recapture some of this today to just be blown away by God? Just be blown away by them. Let me give you some examples of God's miracles in creation. I pulled some of these from William McDonald's book, The Wonders of God. Let me just listen to some of the miracles that are around us every day that we forget. The DNA in our body, the strands that make up our physical bodies, if you could somehow unwind the segments and strands of DNA, do you realize that your DNA would stretch from here to the sun and back 400 times? And yet all of it could be kept in a box the size of a piece of ice. I mean, that's just like, what? I, I can't comprehend that. That's just one of those wow things. In fact, the very fact that I'm speaking to you now and you are hearing me speak, and this is one of those wow things. 
Do you know what happens when you speak? Simultaneously, your brain tells your lungs to push air up through your larynx and tells it exactly which muscles to contract. And depending on the muscles contracting or relaxing, that determines your pitch and your volume and what comes out, the tone and all that. And then it gets through your mouth and simultaneously works with your jaw, your, the shape of your mouth, your tongue, and everything to give it its shape and form. And, I mean, that all happens in a twinkle of an eye, just a millisecond. All of that is going on. And then out comes these words. And beautiful song for some of you, not all of you. I mean, when we talk, when we talk, that right there should just be like, wow, God, this is amazing. I can't believe it. Here's what I want you to do the rest of this week. Every time you talk, end your paragraph with, wow, and just see what people do. Just every sentence is, God, this is a miracle. Did, did you hear that? Did you see what's happening here? And this is amazing. And I mean, we could spend forever on our eyes and our, our nose and our ears. Let me, can you just think about your ears one second? Those of you who are married, I find it fascinating that wives, your husband can be snoring like a locomotive and you sleep right through it. But let the little baby whimper in five rooms down the hall and you are up and ready to go. I mean, how, how is that? I mean, your husband can fall off the bed, stump his toe. Ah, <laughs> but a little, eh, who was that? What was that? I mean, this is amazing. I, scientists can't even explain these kinds of things of how this happens. I want to give you some examples from nature do you know what honeybees can do? We could talk so long about them. One of the things that's fascinating to me is honeybees, their brain is the size of a pinhead, and yet in their beehive, they have to keep it 94 degrees. Otherwise, the honey can max, can the, the, the honey can uh, melt, uh, or you know, the hive can deteriorate. And so to keep it at 94 degrees, as the temperature fluctuates, they will group together outside the hive and flutter their wings to keep it just the right temperature. And they can regulate it even if the temperature sways as much as 60 degrees. I mean, this far blows away any modern-day air conditioning system. It's, it's a miracle. I mean, it's just Wow! at what God has created in these animals. Let me give you another example, the blue whale. Fascinating creature. Let me give you some stats on the blue whale. Larger than, it's longer than three dump trucks, heavier than 110 Honda Civics, and has the heart the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. To sustain an animal this size, it uh, kills and ingests four tons of krill every day, which equals to three million calories. I mean, that's just wow. I mean, most of us are like half that. <laughs> Somebody would be like, yeah, that's about right. There's... Let me give you another example. The monarch butterfly, I find this fascinating. The monarch butterfly... I miss him. <laughs> the monarch butterfly, check out what it does. It, its habitat for many of them is down in central Mexico. But as the seasons change to stay in warmer weather, they will migrate uh, north. But along the way, they will lay their eggs and whatnot along this path and keep going. Now, when those new butterflies emerge, the amazing miracle is without ever seeing their parents, never being there before, they just start flying and head to central Mexico and everybody meets up again. I mean, is that just, just, they have like no brain. I don't know how this happens. This is just, wow, God, you're, uh, you're creative. You're amazing. 
And we could talk for months and months about the miracles of the universe and space. Let me give you a few examples. With our naked eye looking out into the sky, we can see about 5,000 stars. If you've got a telescope, about 2 million stars come into, into view. With the Hubble telescope, it has been able to capture the light of billions and billions of stars. Now, Sir James Jeans has said that there are probably as many stars as there are grains of sand on all the beaches of the world. And yet, even though they look crowded, they're not crowded together at all. Most stars on average are several light years apart. It would take you four, if you could travel the speed of light, it would take you 4,000 generations just to get across our Milky Way galaxy, which is one of about 125 billion galaxies. We can't fathom this. This is just wow. Now, the cool thing is scientists are, are beginning to say, you know what, this is just beyond this is just beyond comprehension, and there is so much intricate order and design to space that there has to be a designer. Like, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's just clear. I mean, God says just look around. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Yeah. To have the universe in its form and function that we have can't happen by accident. They said it'd be like going to the junkyard, throwing some parts in the air, and out come a Boeing 747. I mean, it just, it, it doesn't happen, all right? It's just, you know, take some, take some metal, shake it in your pocket, and pocket watch. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, here's what one scientist recently said. Said the universe is so finely tuned that the odds of achieving it by chance would be the same as having a microscopic dart standing on one side of the universe and throwing it to the other side of the universe and hitting the target the size of a millimeter. It's not going to happen. It is amazing to see. If you look at the earth, the tilt is just right. The speed is just right. The distance from the sun is just right. Everything is just Wow, God. I mean, wow, just take a moment and think about this, how God so overdoes things. I mean, for most of humanity, they haven't even gotten to see most of this stuff we're seeing now. And it's just been sitting out there, just giving glory and speaking to the existence of an amazing creator. And now we just get to say, wow, I mean, God has always given more than enough. When he called Abram and said, Abram, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Abram's like, I don't think so. I'm old. I'm weak. I can't have kids anymore. He's like, Abram, shut up. Let's take a walk. Look up at the sky. I want you to count the stars. That's what I'm going to do with you. Abram, I want you to count the sands on all the shores. That's how I'm going to multiply you and create a people who know me. God's just overdoing this all the time. Even in Ephesians here, if you look in chapter 2 of Ephesians, what does he say? He says, uh, actually, chapter 1, verse 22, God placed all things under Jesus' feet and appointed him head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. All of this, he has given access to us and it brings him glory and pleasure when we walk in the fullness of life. And now, here in the end of this chapter 3, I want you to read it in the message version because I just love the way it expresses what God is saying to us here. Look at this on the screen. It says, and I ask, this is Paul saying, I just pray that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to just take it all in. Take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. And I reach out and experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. And look at this, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess 
or request in your wildest dreams. God is far beyond your imagination in His glory. Far beyond what you can even come up with. I mean, let's practice this. I want you to right now imagine what will heaven be like. Imagine it with me. Just what will that be like? Can you even comprehend no more pain, no more sadness, no more physical limitation? Can you imagine going for a run and never growing weary? Like I'm going out for a jog, see, in a thousand years. I mean, can I just, just help me, man. just dream up what this perfected glory is going to be like. No more sadness, no more disease, no more fear, no more condemnation, no more wondering about, it, about what God is like. We'll just, we'll be there. Imagine this. If you were here during the worship series uh, about a year ago, you heard me uh, talk about this. The, it, it says in Scripture that the angels for thousands of years have been gathered around God just saying, holy, holy. You know what? That word holy is basically saying, wow. And it, it suggests that they are seeing something new. They're seeing something new, and they're just going, wow. And so it's like God in his glory that can't be taken in all at once is saying, look at this. And they're saying, wow. And then he says, you like that? Check this out. Wow. You like that? Check this out. Wow. And that has been going on for thousands of years, and they still haven't reached the end of God. I mean, that shouldn't make us say, wow. Now, what's your problem feel like? What's your worry feel like? From now on, when the devil comes up to you, say, devil, uh uh-uh, I'm just going to brush this off. You can say hello to my heavenly father. There is nothing in this world, no suffering, no pain, no fear that even touches the glory and capacity of God. And then he says, you are my son and my daughter. I've adopted you and you get it all. We should just every day say, wow, yes, let's just say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We get it all, not because of anything we've done. We are the slum dogs, but now we've been transformed, transfigured, and adopted into the kingdom, into the family of God. And he says, baby girl, baby boy, come to the table. It's all yours. Eat if you're hungry. Drink if you're thirsty. Be healed in Jesus' name. We just say, Wow, let's just worship him. David, can you help us? Let's just give praise to God. I want you to give you an opportunity just to recapture that childlike wonder, that wow of who he is. Just reflect on creation. These things were spoken into being by the Father who loves you. That's why he says every day you can come to him with thanksgiving. No matter what, you consider it joyful whenever you face tough times because your daddy has got your back in ways that you can't even imagine. And God says you can imagine heaven all you want, but his word says it's far beyond anything you can imagine. So it's not like, that's why I like, it's great. Come up with what you think heaven's going to be like. God will never say, yep, you got it, that's it. That's all I got. Nope. Far beyond, far beyond anything we can imagine. His glory is far beyond anything we can comprehend. His creation is far beyond anything we can understand. His goodness, His love, He says, I dare you, try to explore the heights, the depths, the length, the width. You'll never grab it. And we get to walk in this every day. So yes, every day we should just be saying, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your love. Let's just, can you worship him with me? Let's just say wow to God.
Let's just express this to God. Then you lead us. Oh, how great yes, God. is our God. You are great, God. Come on and sing with me. How great is our God. Wow, God. And all will see how great. Time. How great, oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Splendor of the King. The splendor of the King. Woo! Clothed in majesty, all the earth rejoices. And all of us rejoice. All the earth rejoices. He wraps himself. at his voice how great is our God come on and sing with me how great is our God and all will sing how great how great is our God God, how great is our God. Come on, you can shout with me one time. Come on. Woo! Come on. We just got to give. In heaven the word might be holy, but down here it's wow for now. We just got to give God one good wow. You ready? One, two, three. Wow. Woo! Good, good stuff. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave telling somebody. I want you to find, I want you to reconnect with that child of wonder and with giddiness in your voice. I want you to just tell somebody something that you think is so cool, so cool about your daddy God, so cool about your father God. If you haven't met him, if you don't know him, don't leave. Come hang with me. Let me know intercessors prayer people on the side they would love to just hey come sit down let me introduce you to jesus if you don't know him you don't, you don't have to do anything jesus did it all if you had to do something then we could boast a little bit god said you can't boast at all my son did it all so you don't have to do anything you receive this gift of life and so if you've never said yes jesus i receive you i give you my life do that today. Do that today. Right now in your heart. Come let me know. Let somebody know and leave here transformed. You can't do this on your own. It's got to be Jesus working through you. His spirit, his life working through you. But as you leave, get giddy and just tell somebody, here's what I love about God. And when you finish talking, just look at your mouth and say, wow, can you believe that? Did you see what just happened? Hey, if you haven't, if you haven't participated in Growth Track 2, it's happening in the coffee shop right now. Lunch is on us. Love for you to hang with us. We're going to teach you some other habits like solitude to help you grow in your relationship with God. Join us now, even if you haven't planned on it. Love to see you. God bless you, church. Love and encourage each other. See you soon. Yeah.